now I did work in a public defender's office as an appellate attorney for almost 18 years. And whenever I would speak with people, they would always be so interested by the criminal justice system, how, how that system works, um, what makes people do bad things to other people or self-destructive things, and how society punishes them when they do step out of line. Um, I always knew when I was working that because I was working with a closed record, a record on appeal, that I would never know the true story behind most of those cases. I would know the facts maybe leading right up to what happened and maybe a little bit afterwards, but I would never know anything really about the people behind the stories. And I felt that writing fiction would allow me to kind of get to those aspects that I could never really know as an attorney. So the book is the story of Liana Cohn. She's a young public defender. She's about to turn 30. She's kind of hit this critical crossroads in her life where she's uh, a little bit burnt out of her job. She's lost her mojo, and she's not sure whether that's the correct path for her anymore. And her doubts are spilling over to her boyfriend, who uh, may or may not be the right guy for her, but he's um, involved in a whole different corporate world that she's not a part of, so she kind of has her doubts about him, too. Um, into the mix, she gets assigned a client whose name is Danny Shea, who's been um, convicted of a terrible crime, and she begins to think that he may be innocent. And the story is how all that Much of your personal life is in this book. <laughs> We're all wondering, aren't we? <laughs> this is fiction. This is a work of fiction. Um, yeah, OK, so there's definitely some personal stuff in there. I mean, clearly, uh, the office was inspired by my office that I worked in for a long time. Um, the uh, corporate boyfriend. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you think about that. Um, I, I never had any romance with any of my clients. <laughs> definitely say that. Uh, yeah, what else? I don't know. I, you know, there's a strong Jewish element clearly in the book, if you've read it. And, um, the, the rabbi character, while not exactly either Rabbi Rubenstein or Rabbi Morgan Stern, does bear a resemblance kind of to both of them. <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about the uh, awakening, if you will, or um, enhancement <laughs> scary thing to of Orthodox Judaism. Okay, so just very briefly, um, most of you haven't read it yet, but the main character does become very friendly with a traditional rabbi in the book. Um, and I, I guess one of the things I'm happy about having written it and the way it came out is that she's she's not religious when the book starts, we all know. She's not religious when the book ends. Um, but she's open to it. She's interested. And she has a lot of great conversations with the rabbi about questions of um, justice and questions of finding your basher, your intended person. and She's, she's interested in finding out what it has to offer, and that, that's really what I was getting at. In uh, today's world of Me Too and everything,